Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the invitation. And uh, um, yeah, I'm <laughs> happy to follow up the, up after this. Uh, yeah very interesting start and i think uh it's uh all the same in aviation that the big main question is what do we as society prioritize in terms of where do we want to use our energy um and our money for technologies but of course also use the renewable energy we have so um no surprise i wouldn't say it's aviation but before we go into that, um, I think my focus today is talking about um, what greenwashing do we see in aviation. And the whole thing starts, of course, with aviation growth. So we have seen a massive growth in, in, uh, in aviation over the past decades. And generally, transport is one of the sectors that where CO2 um, emissions are still growing and aviation is has a big chunk of that and um, even after the COVID crisis after the curb in um, in flight numbers we still have gross projections of four percent uh, per year um, and the industry uh, is projecting to get back to their business as usual around 2024 and as we see in the right chart um, it there's still a projected growth of 3% um, rise, like growth of CO2 emissions per year up to 2050. So that's the, that's the projections from the industry. And of course, they are saying that they have plans to reduce that. And the newest plan uh, are the net zero 2050 plans. And I will get to that later, why we think it's not realistic and not enough. Um, but generally at Stay Grounded, we're very critical of the technological promises of the industry. So first, like there are several um, promises that are included in their um, climate targets. And one of them is efficiency improvements. And um, as we uh, have uh, witnessed over the past decades, any kind of efficiency improvements are always eaten up by the growth rates of the sector. So we have, for example, 1.5% efficiency improvements, but at the same time, 4% growth. So of course, that's um, much more growth in the end than you can ever say for efficiency improvements. Then we have electric planes, um, where actually the technology is still far not ready to um, produce anything that could cover um, yeah any anything relevant to cover uh, the transport that like to cover up long medium or long haul flights so batteries are still much too heavy that means we have only very small and short haul flights uh, that could be covered by electric planes which then in the end means that our flights that could normally be replaced by trains or are such things like um, flying taxis that are just for the wealthy people. There are plans for hydrogen planes, which are also only viable for medium and short haul range in the near future. And there would be a totally new infrastructure needed, which again needs a lot of resources. Then there um, under the big word sustainable aviation fuels, SAF, um, there is also the biofuels, or as we call them, agrofuels, which have a, a lot of uh, problems attached because their availability is very limited, the crop-based as well as the waste-based ones. And there are a lot of environmental and social problems attached. And then, of course, there's offsetting. Um, I think we'll hear about that later. But I just say so much that I think it's a modern sale of indulgences that will not get us anywhere. Um, I want to put a special emphasis on why I why we think that synthetic electrofuels, e-fuels, as hyped as they are, are not a solution. First, they're unproven at scale. But to me, the most important thing is that they just you need a huge amount of renewable, renewable energy. And we've made a calculation looking at if all jet fuel uh, used today was to be replaced with e-fuels, that would require two and a half times the renewable electricity currently available globally around 2019. So here we see 
do we really want to spend the precious renewable energy on aviation, which is just used by a very small and wealthy minority of the planet, or do we want it to heat our homes and to produce food? Um, so the aviation industry has set themselves a lot of targets in the past years, and there has recently been a report by the UK charity We Are Possible that assessed the public climate targets of international aviation since 2000. And they found that all but one of over 50 targets has been missed, abandoned or forgotten about. So just to keep that in mind, when we look at any future targets the aviation industry is setting for themselves, Next slide, please. Um, one minute, um, Dan. Sorry. <laughs> one minute left. Thanks. Yes. Um, and so um, the current plan, as I said, is net zero 2050. And we think that's another uh, greenwashing um, strategy because net zero 2050 doesn't include uh, doesn't mean that the cumulative emissions of aviation will stay within a 1.5 uh, budget, because if we, um, as we can see here in uh, in the in the graph, there is a budget of a run that will exceed aviation's fair share of uh, CO2 budget long before uh, 2050. Um, and yeah, also in their plans for direct air capture, I think we have something on that later, why that's a problem as well. The this cumulative emissions until 2050 are not addressed. Um, so what we say and what we see here is that technical developments will come too late to stay on 1.5 pathways and actually all green solutions extract from the urgent need to reduce aviation now. So it's all a distraction. And the net zero CO2 2050 is just another greenwashing strategy, also backed by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. Um, and instead of that, we need strong taxes, limits, and the moratorium for airport expansions now. And we have compiled all that in six fact sheets on greenwashing that you can find on our website if you're interested with arguments of what the aviation industry is telling us and what they're actually not telling us. And thank you so much. That was a tour de force.